Well, more than 100 million Americans voted early this year, and now we're just moments away from the first polls closing. We're talking about Puerto Rico. Here in the tri-state, voters waited in some long lines at some of the polling spots, despite huge turnout for early voting across New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Some of the shortest lines we saw today were in the city. But if you haven't voted yet, you still have a little more time to make your vote count. Take a look. Polls close at 9 o'clock in New York. They close at 8 o'clock in New Jersey and Connecticut. Today, both President Trump and Democratic nominee Joe Biden made their final push on the campaign trail. The president thanking supporters in Virginia. Mr. Biden focused again on Pennsylvania, a key battleground state he is trying to flip. We have live team coverage throughout the night. Let's get straight to government affairs reporter Melissa Russo, who has been following President Trump's campaign in Washington, D.C. Melissa. David, today the final referendum on the president, his politics, his personality, and the pandemic. At a stop today, Mr. Trump said he's given no thought to a victory speech or a concession speech. Projecting confidence today, President Donald Trump thanking volunteers in Virginia. I feel very good uh, after doing that many rallies. The voice gets a little bit choppy, I think. Buoyed by massive turnout at his closing rallies, the president is dismissing polls that predict he'll lose, but also acknowledging that prospect for the first time. Winning is easy. Losing is never easy. Not for me, it's not. Donald Trump is not going to decide the outcome of this election. That's not the way it works. This process will play out. Every vote will be counted. Earlier on Fox News, Mr. Trump was asked when he'll declare victory. I think we'll have victory, but only when there's victory. I mean, you know, there's no reason to play games. But Democrats remain worried. The president will declare premature victory before all the Democratic leaning absentee ballots are counted, especially in key states like Wisconsin. Michigan and Pennsylvania, where the processing cannot start until today and where counting could take several days. That's the legal process, but the president has been undermining it. Very dangerous Mr. thing president, to be waiting, and we're waiting, we're waiting this. This tremendous, not fair to the people of Pennsylvania. In recent interviews, the people of Pennsylvania described their tense existence in a battleground state. There is such an unpleasant feel to this election. I can't understand how someone can support Trump, and the Trump supporters can't understand how we um, could support Biden. And, you know, I don't know how to, to bridge that gap. And speaking of bridging that gap, the president was asked today, what's his message to the voters who did not support him? And his answer was, everyone should come together, adding that his very success as president should serve as the factor that brings people together. A lot of voters don't necessarily feel that way. The president will be monitoring the election results here in Washington, D.C. at the White House tonight. We're live in D.C. Melissa Russo, News 4 New York. Melissa, thank you. We turn to the Biden campaign, Joe Biden starting election day by visiting the grave of his son, Bo. The former vice president says his son's memory has inspired him during this campaign. And then it was off to the all-important swing state of Pennsylvania, visiting two key cities, his hometown of Scranton and Philadelphia. Tonight, it's back to Wilmington, Delaware. News 4's Andrew Siv continues our coverage. He's standing by in Wilmington. Andrew? And David, as you alluded to, this was a personal day for Joe Biden, an emotional day to visit the grave of his son and to go back to the town where he grew up. For Joe Biden, an emotional start to Election Day with his wife Jill visiting son Bo's grave. Then a visit to the Scranton house where he grew up. What were you thinking about in there on the day you could be elected president? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. He even signed one of the walls from this house to the White House with the grace of God, Joe Biden. Outside, getting a warm reception in his hometown. Meanwhile, the Democratic nominee taking nothing for granted. It feels good, but you know. You got to run through the tape, man. You got to go all the way through the tape. He flew to Philadelphia for a final rally and told our sister station, NBC 10 in Philadelphia, he's not worried about the president's prediction of looting and chaos. The president doesn't get to decide who votes, the voters get to decide who's president. Running mate Kamala Harris went to Detroit. The Biden Harris team concerned that Election Day turnout 
might not match the early vote enthusiasm. The day ain't over. <laughs> Ask me um, after the polls close. Maybe I'll have a better idea. But right now, I'm just here to remind people to vote. As for tonight, Biden expecting to speak in Wilmington, but not guaranteeing a speech if the results are in doubt. Depends on whether it's appropriate here for me. My guess is I'll probably be saying something. And you're looking live now at the podium that's been set up on the stage outside of the Chase Center here in Wilmington. What Joe Biden was alluding to is he doesn't know for sure whether he'll speak tonight. According to campaign aides, certainly more likely if President Trump says something or characterizes the vote totals before there is an outcome. Joe Biden headed for Wilmington, Delaware, and we may hear from him later on tonight. We're live in Wilmington. Andrew Siff is for New York. Andrew, thank you. Let's take a moment and look at the big board because investors rallied on Wall Street today. You see they're closing more than 550 points up. Apparently, they believe there will be a clear winner in tonight's election. That's a live look at the big board. This comes after last week's sell-off, which was Wall Street's worst week since March. Natalie? Well, Dave, emotions running high in the nation's capital right now. A mix of feelings, anxiousness, excitement, uncertainty. And D.C. is bracing for the possibility of civil unrest around this election. Here's what it looked like outside the White House. This is just a little bit ago. Crews put up a fence around the complex. It's supposed to be non-scalable. News 4's Adam Cooperstein continuing our live team coverage outside the White House. Adam, you were showing us that as it was going up yesterday. Yeah, Natalie, and right now the atmosphere here, it's odd. It's somewhere between festive and unsettled. Yeah, you've got that fence here blocking the public, walling them off from the White House. And there are protests organized for tonight, groups that are saying they're going to be celebrations. They plan to watch the results on big screens as they come in. And it sounds really at this point more like a tailgate for a sporting event. And I'm, so I'm an American. American. Other than a few spirited debates. Five things that Donald Trump has done for you. Trump supporters and Biden backers have been mostly calm on election day outside the White House. It's exciting. It's, it is exciting to be a part of history. There's only one way to make America great again. A small crowd gathered at Black Lives Matter Plaza. Some ready to celebrate, sounding the shofar. Others seeking serenity. I hate the division in the country. It's driving me insane. The backdrop, a perimeter fence surrounding the White House, part of increased security as D.C. braces for possible unrest. I have never, ever seen anything close to this, and it's really heartbreaking, all because the president is too much of a coward to sit there and face his, the voters. I think it's a justifiable response to build a gate and to board up businesses so they don't, like, you know, lose their livelihood. We ask voters from both sides if they see any scenario tonight where the streets remain peaceful. I don't really feel hopeful. I'm actually afraid. As the night goes along and one way or another decide the way the election is going, you'll see things change. But there's no, there's no like animosity because somebody has on a Trump uh, mask or somebody's voting for Biden or something like that. I don't see it. One of the prominent protest groups here in D.C. called Shutdown D.C. posted a social media uh, message about unrest that said this. Votes will still be coming in tonight, so it's probably not the time to create a disruption. They say they will be, though, in a good place to react to whatever happens. So we shall see. Reporting live from outside the White House, Adam Cooperstein, News 4 New York. All right, Cook, thank you for that.